In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness and health and entertainment podcast, uh, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by some of our listeners. Um, we also open the episode with an introductory portion. This is where we talk about current events. We have a lot of fun. Sometimes we mention our sponsors or we talk about studies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a breakdown of this entire episode. So the first 43 minutes is the intro portion. We start out by talking about conspiracy theories. Ooh, our favorite. Oh, Justin and I have a lot of fun with yeah, these. We go wild. Some of them are crazy. Some of them not so crazy. Mm. Um, all of them are fun. Look then we, into it. Then we talk about Kanye West uh, running for president. We got some more information on that. The world is going crazy. <laughs> What's happening? Then we talk about TikTok, uh, the social media platform that all the kids are using, um, and the U.S. government may actually ban it. Mm. Uh-oh. I called this. Uh, there's also a coin shortage. Uh, I didn't even know this could happen, but apparently... We're running out of coins. Uh, then we talk about Organifi's protein crepes. I said that wrong again, didn't I? Crepes? <laughs> crepes? crepes? I can't crepes. say that. Yeah. Uh, Organifi makes organic supplements. They're high quality. Now, one of our favorite products from them is their protein powder. It's dairy-free, gluten-free. It's allergen-free. Tastes really good. Easy to mix. High quality amino acid profile because it's a mix of different types of protein. And, and it's organic. And you can use it to make some delicious uh, products. Um, so we talk about the recipe on the episode. Now, if you want to go to Organifi, try their protein or any of their other products, like their green juice, which is their top seller, uh, just do this. We'll give you a discount. Go to Organifi.com. Uh, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash mind pump. And use the code mind pump for 20% off all of their products. Then we talk about ancient architecture. Uh, we mentioned James Lindsay on the, the Joe Rogan podcast. Then we talk about a new social media platform apparently coming out to counter the other ones. It's called Parlor. Sounds kind of interesting. Yeah, we're on there now. Then we get into the fitness questions. Uh, the first one that we answer is, should I go to failure on isolation exercises? The next question, um, how often do you really need to work your abs and core the third question, what do we all consider to be the three most essential supplements a person should take? And the last question, how do you fix a hip shift when you're squatting or deadlifting? Also, all month long, uh, MAPS Strong is 50% off. Now, this is a workout program inspired by strongman training. But here are the results that you get from following this program. You get amazing posterior chain development. That means your back your butt, and your hamstrings. It's one of the best programs for posterior chain development. It's also a phenomenal program for overall strength and overall work capacity, meaning if you follow this program, you'll gradually increase your body's ability to handle more and more intensity and better workouts. So that's a good thing because over time, you do want to improve and increase those things so you can continue to get more and more fit and improve your performance. Now, this program is half off. Here's how you get that 50% off. Go to mapsstrong.com, that's M-A-P-S-S-T-R-O-N-G.com, and use the code STRONG50, that's S-T-R-O-N-G-5-0, without a space. That's all for the discount. Yeah. Did I ever tell you guys how, uh, how I, I, thought there were, in, there, I thought there were Italian words that were actually Italian? I thought they were real Italian words, not realizing- They're slang. That they were English words that my grandmother or my father- just said yeah. with a with a tis, with a really strong accent. So, I, but I didn't know they were English words. I thought they were Italian. Did I ever tell you about this? No, no, no. Oh, yeah, like, tell me those words again. Oh, you dude, told me one time, bro. It's, it's so the, when I really I, the first time I realized this, I was twelve, and I'm in Italy, and we go get some ice cream, and the guy's like, you know, in Italian, he's like, which flavor would you like? Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the flavors, and I see vanilla and chocolate and strawberry, and I'm like, um, uh, strawberry. And the guy looks at me like, it's strawberry. He's like, huh? I says, strawberry. And I point to it and he goes, fragola? I'm like, what? Fragola? <laughs> you so want to fight? <laughs> so my, yeah, my cousin's like, what are you saying? I'm like, strawberry. You never heard that word. I'm, you know, we're talking back and forth. I go home and I tell my mom and she starts cracking up. She goes, that's just your grandma saying strawberry with a really strong <laughs> accent. <laughs> so I went down the list of, uh, there were, do you know how many words that I thought were real words that weren't? No, I'm assuming because she speaks half Italian and then uh, she would yeah. sometimes use English words. That's why. Yeah, they it's just, like when you say Spanglish. Like, what do you call that if it's a mix? Of it's both? like that, right? Yeah. So, like, like, like garbage. I thought the word, the Italian word for garbage was gaibusha. 
<laughs> or like, Can't or like, shit. or like the hose, you know, the water hose or whatever. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. my dad always said, "Uza, can you go get the Uza?" Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was the hose. I yeah. thought, <laughs> and the, the best is this. So I used to go work with my dad all the time, and you know, he's he, he's a tile setter, so it's tile marble, or whatever. And the stuff that you mix, and then you put on the, the cement or whatever as glue to stick the, the tile plaster. on. It's called thin set. Oh, thin set. It says that on the bag, thin set. Mm. For, I didn't know that. I had no idea. All I knew was my dad would say in Italian, go get me the thin setta. And I thought it was called thin setta until I was like 16 and I grabbed the bag and I see thin set, thin, thin yeah, set. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what he means. I was like, that's not the word. <laughs> that's not the word, dude. There were a lot of words like that. Oh, the trunk bad. of the car, trunka. <laughs> just <laughs> It's just a word that they said wrong. Uh, I was like, it was that's weird. That's confusing and it's hilarious. A, it was a weird realization. It like blew my mind, you know, yeah. when, I, when I did all that. I don't know. Dude, anyway. what is that conspiracy thing you just made me watch, Dude, Justin? I what? don't even want to talk about it. Bro, oh, we yeah, shouldn't we even can't talk about, talk about that. Huh? No. We'll, we'll talk about it another time. No. Where did you come? Isn't that crazy? I People th- have been sending that, that docu- you know, whatever you call it, documentary to me. I've had it sent to me at least a dozen times. I know Justin yeah. has. Yeah, it, I mean, it really just kind of exposes all the media, Hollywood, everything, CIA, everything all combined in one. It's just, it's all a bunch of weird shit. Yeah. It's, what's it called? Out of the Shadows? Uh-huh. Out of the Shadows. Yeah, if you want to just go down the rabbit hole and make yourself feel weird yeah, just go, go watch that there all there you go I've been there a few times now was that was that on any major platform or is that just being YouTube sh- shared through YouTube yeah mm-hmm. and, it, and, and from my understanding it keeps getting taken down which only adds to the you the know mysterious the allure of, it. Yeah. of the whole thing you know what's weird that they talk about on there the 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 Podesta emails all those emails that they found that all have all these code words the strange wiki, the WikiLeaks ones yeah dude and yeah. It, and they're all you know the conspiracy theory of course is that they're talking about you know child sex trafficking stuff like that right if you look these emails up and read them they make no sense they say they talk about pizza and handkerchiefs and we, but weird and weird well, ways that don't make any sense at all and they're like big people like yeah. Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and but it's like come on like what would you do if you're writing emails that you know eventually somebody could look over in a court of law you would hide it with like specific words to kind of encode it Dude, the weird is the world like, is of course is weird right now. Like you know, when Hillary lost, they lost all her emails, right? Mysteriously, lost all her emails. Yeah, right. And they went and found the servers and the computers, and they were smashed by hammer. Yeah. Like someone went and s- destroyed them all with a hammer. That's almost as weird as the Epstein killing himself thing. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You hear about these things and then they just lose lose momentum immediately. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Is so, anybody following the girl that got we brought this up the other day? Like, and she was the rumor was she was going in the same cell. I don't know if that was a joke. Oh or, no, that was a joke. You yeah. talking about Gilsane or whatever? The girl, yeah. the girl that's good. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, okay, are we paying attention to like where she's at and it uh, alive still? Yeah, so or anything apparently like? she had made copies of all these uh, videos and things that Epstein had. So and she's that, ready to talk. She's ready to kind of reveal it. Which is exciting, but also I'm worried. You know, I'm worried that somehow it's going to get meddled with. What's going to, okay, so what is going to happen? Because when Epstein mysteriously died and the surveillance cameras turned off and the security guards fell asleep and all this obviously, you know, bullshit or whatever, what's going to happen when, if and when, she dies mysteriously. Are people going to lose yeah. their minds, or yeah. are they just going to not do anything about it? Is is it just going to keep going on? Like, oh well, it happened again. Yeah, Me. I don't know, man. Or are we actually going to get upset and and you know do something about yeah, it? Yeah, dude, because it's all wow, it's all weird, I dude. Well, I'm, part of me is almost like, dude, if it is this big, yeah. you know, if this conspiracy thing is true, and it is all these big powerful people, what's going to happen if they do get taken down? Like if it does get revealed, imagine this, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to do the structure of society. I did this thought experiment the other day because I, you know, I'm reading all this stuff and conspiracy theories to me are fun. That's all. I, I get entertained by them. But right. part of me is like, okay, let's say this is true and it all comes out, mm-hmm. right? Let's say the, the what they say, right? Bill Clinton and Prince Andrew and Beyonce and Oprah, all these powerful people all get taken down at the same time. 
Mm-hmm. That's a huge, like, are people even going to believe it? Yeah. That's too, it's so much. It's it, such a major shift. I don't know that people that can would be mentally s- handle it. Such a, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, totally. Oh, That's why it's like you talk about it, but it's like I kind of keep it to myself, you know? Because <laughs> it's know. just, it's, it, it, it's, it goes so deep that, that uh, it, it's at a point where I don't, I don't think people will want to even recognize it, you yeah. know, as being a possibility. Yeah. I, I remember how hard it was for me to even believe, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bill Cosby. Yeah. Just because I, he, he, he was so, it, I, I was so sold on the fact that he was such a nice oh, you guy. Oh, you remember when that totally. first came out? I got fucking fire. I was so bummed about I that. got fire for just saying like, oh, you know, before everyone jumps on it that yeah. he for sure is a pedophile, like, wait, you know. No, no, he was a pedophile. He was just a rapist. I mean, a, a rapist, yeah. like, you know. Um, just terrible. Me, don't you remember though? I got, we got shit on the, I got shit on the podcast for, yeah. because yeah. when it first hit the news, even I wasn't like, okay, I'm not going to just automatically. Yeah believe everything until more stuff. Oh, boy, people were pissed. Yeah. Well, no, that's a, that's a good position. I think you should always do that when you hear something is to to wait until there's evidence. Well, or I'm always that way. Yeah, yeah. You know, but the fact that I I, I expressed that and said that, yeah. of course I got enough. But it was a weird feeling yeah. because you don't realize how how uh influenced you are by, you know, a person's fake persona mm-hmm. for effect. years. Yeah, that you it's hard to believe totally. someone like that because he's such a he's such an upstanding, you know, like example of somebody in society that you you strive to be like, like, you know, and it was like such a beacon of 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 good values. Well, yeah, that's what that, you think, right? Yeah. Well, the thing that I have a hard time with and, you know, you, you, you I never watch this stuff. You guys get you guys you two are definitely more. Oh, we have this. a good time. Yeah, I know. And you guys made me watch <laughs> this one. The, the thing that I have a hard time wrapping my brain around when watching stuff like this is that it, it, I mean you say this on the podcast all the time and so I, I I believe that you believe this which is that there's more good people out there than there are bad yeah do we agree on that I, I do so I if do. we agree if we agree on that percentage wise okay that means more than 50 percent are good now let's say Hollywood is fucking corrupt and a, and a bulk of them are bad that still would leave a, a good percentage of good people within it right mm. that I couldn't imagine how something like that could go on for so long and not enough mm. people there, there's just so much subtleties involved. Yeah. There's nothing subtle. Well, well, there's, there's nothing subtle there's about fucking pedophilia, though. You oh. know what I'm saying? Well, hold oh, on a second. Who's that, that dude? Who's that dude that got in big trouble? Uh, what's his name? The overweight, uh, gross producer guy who was like super powerful. Weinstein. Yes, for he decades. Yeah, he was like this for decades. It was People well known knew about it. Yeah. Nobody said anything. He got away with it for a very. There's, I mean, he was yeah. best friends with Oprah and all these. Famous, powerful people. He got away with it for a long yeah, time. Yeah, but I feel dude. like this is much bigger than that. Well, think you're about what now. You're talking about you're talking about one man and everybody that he's impacted. And there's lots of people that know or yeah. speculate on it. And and really, the only people that really know are the people that have been impacted or saw it, right? Because everything else is hearsay. And so you know, it's the old saying that goes: believe half of what you see and nothing that you hear. Mm-hmm. So you know, there's a there's speculation still with a lot of that. But when you're watching something like this, that's talking about a, a massive ring yeah. that has tons of powerful people in it. I just think that, God, that's so many. Yeah. For so that. many moving well, parts. Yes. Like, how how is there not at least two good people connected to those three people and at least two people that are good connected to those three people? I like, agree. I agree. That's logic, right? Logic yeah. will say, says all that. But then there's another side of me that, you know, has fun with it. They'll and hide says, it too, you know. Well, that says, look, there were people that would try to, you know, what do they call them? Whistleblowers that mysteriously. Yeah, they just disappear. Yeah, or, kill, you know, yeah. you know, committed suicide and under strange circumstances or whatever. Yeah. You have Epstein who his private uh, uh, flight logs are, I mean, the, the, the most famous people and, and powerful people you can think of on his plane multiple times. I've told, you know, I said this before, Bill Clinton was on there, I don't know how many times, 20 something times, many of those times told the secret service to stay home. So in situations like that, especially if you have incriminating evidence on the person, you know what I'm saying? Look, let's say you do some dirt with somebody, something really, really bad, but they have the evidence of it. They have the pictures. They have the the video or whatever. Now they have blackmail on you, and they could say, "Hey, look." Well, this also and goes, you're not going to say anything. This also goes back yep. to that book that I'm reading right now that I tell you guys about with the thinking fast and thinking slow. And you know, you uh, up until uh, two years ago, I didn't even know who Jeffrey Epstein was. Mm. So the the only information that I've been presented of him as a as an individual has been all put in a a negative 
disgusting bad light. Right. So my brain has already formulated an opinion on him, and so anything that could potentially confirm, connect it to him, connect or to him, or confirm that bias is very easy for you to go down that rabbit hole That's of true. believing all that stuff, right? So mm. it's just because it, you could. Uh, here's another thing that I look at when I see, like I watched his documentary and everything. Uh, there is no doubt he is a, for sure one of the most powerful people, mm. just because of his relationships that he's kept in. So to me, I go, okay, all these people that are going to his his place. You know, uh, is it always because of this this pedophilia stuff, or because because this guy is very powerful and right, connected? Right. And yeah, I want to sure be both. right. I want to be connected to this guy and have relationships with this guy because he can pull a lot of strings. Like totally. So true. there's uh, that's my brain just works yeah. that way. And by by no means because so I don't want to get fucking DMs and emails from people <laughs> like this. I'm not defending this guy. I'm just tr I'm just trying to help think logically through a, a process like this. Yeah, no, I agree. And, it's and, just not as fun as, as thinking about the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's, more, all, it's more entertaining yeah. to jump on the yeah. bandwagon, so, right? Speaking of entertaining, Kanye, huh? So he's running Woo! for reels. Did yeah. you see his like what he said his platform is and all that stuff? No. What, you guys didn't see what that? Is it? I, I just know he, he was trying to like separate himself a bit from Trump. He says he did that. He They asked him if... Because here's what would inevitably probably happen. Let's say he ran as an independent, which is what he would have to do, he would definitely, in, in my opinion, many people's opinions, pull votes from Biden over votes from Trump, right? So he would hurt Biden far more. They asked him about that. He says, I don't care. Part of me thinks that's the plan. Part of me thinks he's doing this to do that because remember how, how he was so supportive yeah. you know, of Trump? He said that he, he said vaccines are a mark of the beast, whatever that means, and that his running mate would be a pastor from i forgot where um he's never voted in his entire life so so never voted but running for president <laughs> <laughs> wow gas is gonna be yeah that's interesting this is gonna be interesting dude i mean it, you know if you take a step back and you just look at it as entertainment this yeah. is a great reality show and he's happening. really going through with this that's what he says yeah, i don't know man. well i mean a publicity stunt you I called this early on that we this may be the most entertaining election we've ever seen in oh, our life oh. and if if kanye's now throwing his name in the hat it's for sure definitely going that way you know what makes me it makes <laughs> me wonder that there because this could potentially be a viable strategy so if I was an evil uh, political strategist, let's say I worked for the Republican uh, National Convention or the or the Democrats, is right? this you putting your name in the hat? No, right here? no. Okay. Let's just say I did, and I would never, by the way. Uh, but it's definitely twenty twenty. Yeah, I'm just saying. Let's say I worked for them as a political strategist. This could be a very uh, effective strategy to win an election. Where, let's say you're running, it's close. You want to win. You find somebody to run as an independent who you know will pull votes from your opponent. Right. Have them run just long, just enough to screw them over so that you could win. You Basically, know what I'm saying? Ross Perot him. Essentially, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah, I thought that too. I wonder if that's exactly what's going to play out, or you know, if people just look at it as a joke and won't even vote for him. I don't know. Dude. Well, I mean, he's popular enough to where because think about the votes he would he would potentially get. The young vote, I think, is what he would do. You don't think at. he's already lost? Like, I I feel like you know when he came out and hardcore supported Trump, I feel like he lost a lot of his like hard left people following him because of that. Right. I think that don't there's you think he already kind of lost. And then the, the ones that are sticking around are your conservatives. I think he would pull enough people from that side that are young, because he's Kanye, maybe pull some of the black vote, uh, especially the, the the black vote that may be uh, strong Christians, for example, because they might uh, you know identify with him or yeah, whatever. That's our, they're already conservative. Mm. They're well, already, They're already leaning Trump. Don't but you maybe think? not, because remember that what's been painted so much about him mm. is that he's you know racist or whatever. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just saying, if you were to pull from either any side, it would be Biden. I it just wouldn't can't, be, I can't, in my I, opinion. I can't see anybody who considers himself... A, the only thing I like that you say, or that I, I agree with that you say, is that he may get a, 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 a black vote that is not wasn't really really voting and is young that it starts to come out and do that otherwise if you're already considered a regular voter i don't see anybody really voting well, for him seriously so when you look at the political landscape the both parties people who are solid right and left are a minority <clears throat> the majority of voters are in the middle somewhere undecided that's where the fight is you're hmm. not going to win over the hardcore Republicans, if you're a Democrat, and vice versa. It's not going to happen. It's, it's almost impossible. You're wasting your time, essentially. Right. But what you are trying to do is get those people who are kind of like in between, and Kanye may prevent 
some of those in-betweeners from going to Biden who maybe weren't going to go to, to Trump to begin with. Okay, you see what yeah. I'm saying? So I don't know, man. It's gonna be. It's, gonna be, it's like everybody gets yays. Dude, this yeah. is this is why I say, man, we should vote for the president to have as little power as possible because this would not be terrifying. He might be a rapper. Soon. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he makes sick beats, though, dude. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yes, come on, dude. we need that, dude. Or he tricks out the White House. That yeah, would be cool, dude. Yeah. dude it's, you know what's even worse than that? So if let's just pretend, right? If he was president, that means that Kim would be the first lady. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, <God>. oh man. <laughs> First lady got, got back. Oh. Dude, that means the Kardashians would be in the White House. Oh, oh, you would, <laughs> no, that's a whole other uh, reality show oh, I don't want to watch. Oh, my God. What a you time. would, though. I would. I would. But that's why I'm saying. If they had no power, if the, if the president, like they're, like they're supposed to, had little power, which is originally how it's supposed to be, yeah. this would be entertaining. But because they have so much power, it's terrifying. It is terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying. They, they do have that much influence. I mean, look at uh, what was the other Kardashian, the one that uh, is the uh, the one that had the app that like that crashed uh, uh, Snapchat. That I one's know. Like, what was oh, her yeah. name? Yeah, because she said it was dead. Yeah, she, yeah. yeah. They lost. I don't it. remember. Like, that was. I was like, I could not believe the power, dude. That one individual had. Dude, speaking of apps, you guys hear what's going on with TikTok? Oh, so something about they're talking about potentially pulling it from the U.S. Right? Yeah. Is that what I hear? Yeah. Be- okay. So it's a Chinese. I called this. It's a. We did, dude. Yeah, dude, it's a, a Chinese-owned app, and I do not trust any company that is going to be a part of the of a, of a of a communist party because they don't have the same protections. Necess- not saying American government doesn't do it either. There's potentially. massive state influence, but yeah, but they're the the risk is that they're going to capture all kinds of crazy data that people are going to give up willingly right. on Americans, and apparently there's some evidence that they may be happening. So Australia and India are already talking about <coughs> banning TikTok. And now the U.S. government is talking about. But what maybe data that. are they really getting? I mean, let's go through this. Like, there's your people dance just moves in your face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's the stupidest thing. Well, what I've did ever Sal? Seen. Yeah, what Sal yeah. Sun said a witty comment about that because he was teasing. He was teasing Bree for being on TikTok. What did he, he say? He said. He said. Uh, oh, he's telling her like, oh, you use TikTok, and she's like, yeah, I love TikTok. About that, he's like, you're you're not worried about your face being used on an ID in China for <laughs> <laughs> committing crimes in, in, in like two years. That's, yeah. a, that's a valid point. You no. Know, no, Sometimes I, he I, makes me really proud. Yeah, uh, no, he does. Yeah. So that, that was actually pretty yeah. witty and clever. Well, I would have thought that. Well, look, if <laughs> totally. it, well, think about it. Let's say they get like, you aren't know, you in Dubai? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a gym somewhere? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. No, well, I, I've already had like uh, profiles for like the eHarmony and like. With your picture? Yeah, with all my all, all my stuff. I mean, shit, you put it out there on Instagram and Facebook. Somebody's going to use it. It's yeah. really easy to rip and, and then mm. make those. Well, well getting let, people laid. think about it this way <laughs> TikTok is on your iPhone. Technically, if they're smart enough or whatever, they could go into the other data that's on your phone. They could know things like location, yeah. No, yeah, you're right. age. Yeah. They could get your face, everything, your basically. thumbprint. Your, yeah. your fa- they could they could get anything they want. And then what would they Facial use that? Yeah, that could be used for you know all kinds of things. Espionage. It could be used to manipulate. Uh, kids, you could you could kind of see. Well, uh, yeah, that's why that's what made me uh, concerned about it when I read about like the U.S. government w- or the uh, you know the military was already banning everybody in the military from using it mm-hmm. since day one. And what the, the rest of the public shouldn't be worried, dude. Mm-hmm. So what? who's who's the brilliant millionaire that starts up the U.S. version of TikTok right. so, to be ready for as soon as that drops off to give kids an alternative? Yeah, where, where's that? Yeah. Right, because I mean that to me that would be the most brilliant thing well, to be watching for right now is if it's going to get banned in all these countries and it's because it's tied to china what happens when or does instagram just add that as a new feature mm. just like they did with snapchat well think what if how about this what if china just sends over a spy who then invents the another app and now he's based in the u.s but he's still connected over that like, what's to stop <laughs> dude, them from doing that watching too many conspiracy theories dude, you fucking <laughs> hey guys. We're, we're on a roll hey, tiktok gate that, <laughs> hey that's what <laughs> happened during the cold war dude that shit used to happen TikTok, all you don't stop the time. You know that's how they got the nuclear. They got nuclear technology. They stole it from the U.S. through yeah. TikTok. No, oh, no, that was <laughs> TikTok. That was hilarious. that was the old school way, the, the hard way of doing it. <laughs> yeah. It, hey, you know what? Another crazy thing. You sent me an article that I had read earlier about the coin sor- shortage. So I read the article, right? What is going on in the world today? Yeah. yeah. So does that mean my pennies are going to be worth more soon? No, it means that Ooh. they're. It just means that they're. There's, there's a shortage because of COVID. They weren't producing as many. Yeah, not apparently. circulating. Yeah, something like that. So now we're not having to make coins. Now here, you want to talk about conspiracy theories? I'm like, are they trying to get us to you know off paper <laughs> right. so they could track everything? Anyway, I'm going. Well, too far okay. With okay. <laughs> so I don't understand. I read the article. 
And I, I, you know, I sent the screenshot of my big, you know, five gallon Alhambra full of coins. Yeah, right? you're like, like I've been waiting for this. <laughs> yeah, 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 you've been waiting for this, right? <laughs> Finally, like it's the smartest. But uh, all it really is, it shows me is that, uh, and it's just obvious, right? So all these countries are in in lockdown and are not going to stores and using paper money and coins. Yeah. We're Nobody's making using cash. Right yeah, now. we're Venmoing and we're buying with credit online yeah. and like And the uh, mint isn't producing as many because right. production is down because their their offices are right. Shut so down. what's the big deal? I mean I don't is it like one of those articles that just meant to like get everybody riled up over it and it doesn't really mean anything? Um I don't know. I mean what could it technically mean? Well it could technically mean that if you bought something with cash you couldn't get exact change back. You know, it could mean it could mean something like that. I mm. I, I mean but I mean, that's not that big of a deal, I guess. Get that stupid. Yeah. What do you guys do with your chain? I mean, you obviously store it. Yeah, in a big I, gallon. I keep it in my I five gallon know. bucket. <laughs> yeah, there's just a bunch of random change all over my truck. You mm. know, it's just I, I I try to get rid of it whenever I have it. I've been I've been supportive of getting rid of pen. It's at least pennies. What do you do with a penny? Have you ever used a penny to buy something? It's, just, it's like dirty. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Anyway, yeah. doesn't oh, it I, cost more oh, money had, to make I, it than it's worth? No, I have I have family member sure. and friends that are like this that like they keep like the change in there and they always try and give exact change when they buy something uh-huh. which is like the opposite theory how i always do things right so their theory is like always keeping that change nearby so it's like when something is a dollar 72 they can yeah. give them exactly a dollar 72 mm-hmm. and nothing more mm-hmm. right. where i'm like oh i always want to pay over so i can collect all this change and then it, i save it because i don't ever want to pay with it so it's just like oh it's mm-hmm. building up how much change have you saved you know there's a lot so i save i do one dollar pills too so i do one dollar bills and then i do you know quarters dimes nickels and, and pennies right? so you don't save one dollar huh. bills yeah i don't, I don't if, you just throw them in the in the yeah if, if, a, if a one dollar bill is in my pocket from the day or whatever i'll stuff it in there mm. yeah just uh, and you yeah. don't know how much money's in there huh? well I, I used to so this all started with change first but then i realized that like i kind of i I, fig- I looked up like uh one of those change jars like totally filled up like how much money would it really be and it was nowhere near what i what i'd want it to be for saving it for mm. years and do years. you ever roll it up and take it to the bank or you do that coin machine in, in safeway no they take like fucking 30 i know i did that and i was so pissed yeah though. they take way like, too much way too on. much no yeah. I'll, I'll, that's I'll, how lazy people are yeah, I know. yeah yeah no i'll pay like, a, that like i'll pay like a family member or a kid something to, to roll those one day or whatever but my theory back then was like you know uh that that was a, a decent a little a decent amount of money for me to be saving. Like, oh, if I save this up for a couple of years, it'd be a few thousand dollars, it'd be a vacation or whatever. Like, oh, yeah. now I look at it, and it's like as long as it's taking to build up, I'm like, this is in in uh, deflation, right, or whatever. Inflation mm. is going to cause it to be worth less than mm. what it fucking is. Yeah, just sitting there, right. So then I started shoving dollar and sometimes five dollar bills inside of it to like, okay, well maybe. Now it'll build up when it's you know filled up all the way. When I was a kid, I would Mm. because this is back in the day when you would actually go to the convenience store and and play video games there because they would have an arcade or whatever in there. I would scrounge for a quarter, a single quarter, and I'd walk a whole mile just to go play Street Fighter. Yeah, you know, just go play Street Fighter at the. There it is. There it is. It's five gallons is about eleven hundred dollars. That's not bad. Okay, bro. You know how long it takes to fill one of those up. I've been working on that for like seven years. Really? More than that. And really? I'm like, I'm about halfway up. Now, yeah, now, not, do you not do, worth it? Do you do something spe- like? Is it like okay? Once it's up to a certain point, this money is is for something special like fun. Well, or- so Katrina and I. So so the, the, before I even so that actually it's longer than that to over ten years because I had it before Katrina. So before before Katrina it was just I was saving it and then I, then she came in and like and she like puts a little bit of change in there every once in a while and I said well now I have to include you in this thing right yeah. so because you're adding to this mm-hmm. so I said let's do this when it fills all the way up we'll take everything in it and we'll do a vacation so that oh, okay. was yeah, yeah. so that's the plan with it and, and then when that's I, why you put the dollar well, in yeah so I looked it up and I'm like a yeah. vacation for eleven hundred dollars I gonna do yeah, shit you know, yeah I feel <laughs> like you get better return from one of those like credit cards for airline miles. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Justin's correct. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for you pointing out how ridiculous it. <laughs> yeah. that is. That's a that's a, thank oh, you. Sorry, thank but, you. Yeah. It's, it's like the time Hard it takes facts. to roll it all up. You know what I mean? Might yeah. not even be worth. Yeah, that. I I really thought it would be a lot more money than eleven hundred dollars, and mm. and then I saw that. But I also do this too, though. So like, I really try and put mostly quarters, and yeah. so I'm, my goal is that it's more than what it, it, these averages uh, come out. You're to not be. you're not like Justin, and you say fifty cent pieces or whatever. Remember he told oh, us that man. story? Oh yeah, I dude, I still have that in. 
in my like bank account somewhere. So yeah. What do you mean in your well, bank account? Well, like a safe deposit savings box. safe safe deposit. Box. <laughs> That's so yeah. funny. It's yeah. like nineteen. You're like 19, in the nineteen fifties. <laughs> Someday they'll be worth yeah. you know its weight in gold. I, I remember my mom once gave me two dollar bills because remember how they made those for a short period of time? Yeah. So they were, it was so weird to have a, a you know two dollar yeah, bill. So what is the story on the two dollar bill? There's a story behind that, right? How it got started. I, there's a reason for that. I don't. I, rem- I don't remember what I read. Yeah. When, why, so it was in circulation, but then they pulled it out because obviously it was uh, stupid. Did Doug's, old, Doug's old enough. What Doug? What's the two dollar bill history? Do you know it? I don't recall. I'm going to look it up here. Yeah, let me. Yeah, you know. Doug, yeah. Doug remembers when two dollars was worth two thousand dollars. Remember that, Doug? Who, who's on? Who's <laughs> those are good days. Yeah. <laughs> those are the, good, who's, the good old days. You could buy, you could buy a whole pterodactyl. Who's on the two dollar bill? <laughs> <laughs> who's on the two dollar bill? Yeah. Do you know who's on? the I two? don't know. You can, yeah, you should look that up. <laughs> yeah. Poor whoever that president is. <laughs> it's yeah. like, yeah. damn it. <laughs> I don't. Re- I don't remember who's even on it. <laughs> they took my face off. <clears throat> yeah. Let's find. Let's find that out. So, hey, I got. I got. I, I finally picked the car that we want. Remember how I was debating between the. Oh yeah, suburban in the minivan. So have you, you do you have it? I know you picked it we out. We got it. We got it. Oh, you have. Yeah. yeah how do you, it. now? How does it feel? So we got the suburban. Um, All right. It's a it's a big car, dude. Yeah. yeah that is how, a really big. How car. How masculine do you feel? Huh? Oh. See, I already feel masculine. I don't need a big car to do that. Yeah. You, know? you don't yeah. think that? <laughs> I don't need a big lifted truck to display <laughs> yeah. my. Hey, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe that doesn't help anything. But it's I can't fun. imagine that a van would make you lose. Some it balances it out. I feel like a van would make you lose a little bit. It's dude. First off, it's a massive car and it but it a vehicle but it drives uh, like a smaller car that's what's different about the the today like you, it doesn't drive like a big if you truck. bought an old yeah. if you bought like the old you know in the 90s yeah they were like tanks that you could barely had no turning radius yeah you need two hands to Bro, turn. i did a u-turn in that thing i'm like wow this thing has got incredible turning radius yeah my so my so i don't have my denali anymore right but my denali had a better turning radius than the little C-class Mercedes we had. Wow. So I, when we, like right here where we flip mm-hmm, a Yui, mm-hmm. so whenever I would have the Denali, I can flip it, come right back over here this way. If I have the Mercedes, I go down the block and come back around. Because, really? Yeah, the turning radius is worse on the wow. little C-class. No, I, I, it's 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 easy to drive and it's comfortable. It's, of course, the reason why we got it, it's got tons of space because I got a third kid, right, on the way. Yeah. Because I have, you know, my, my, my son and daughter. Now I got a third one. And if we bring anybody else or we're going somewhere for distance, say we're driving up to Tahoe, um, I'm going to have the third row up or whatever. And every other vehicle with a third row, if you have the third row up, there's, there's like no, no space in the back there's to, none. to put anything. Now, the minivan I was thinking would be good, but minivans, their trunk space is – now, it's deep, but it's like this wide. Yeah. How, what are you going to put in there? We don't really put much, so yeah. we needed something that had a lot of, a lot of trunk space. You can't space stack order. everything vertically. No, yeah. no, no, no. So we're, you know, but Jessica drives it. So now that you got it, let's mm-hmm. do uh, what we did at Justin's. What? what do you think about No, I'm not going to lift it up. Lift it. It's lifted. That's so what am I going to do with a lifted – what am I doing? Yeah, ass. You have That's a tall You have a tall location now dude you, there's yeah, snow there all the time it. you don't need to lift it to go in the snow well, unless you're going off-road and well, go we we might need be, to now that justin's lifted we might be doing a lot of off-roading no, this year yeah, we're gonna go on huh? no. excursions no. Come on, yeah. Guy. Yeah. No. i have a safari i have a big penis i don't need to, <laughs> oh, I don't need to wow. lift my <laughs> wow <laughs> the, the person who has to say that is uh questionable that's, <laughs> that's all i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the that's, yeah. the that's the stereotype right yeah, yeah, yeah. wonder if it's true anyway i have one yeah yeah come on anyway dude hey uh, what about those protein crepes from, uh, am I saying it right? Crepe? Crepe? Crepes. Crepe. Crepes. It looks like it says crepe. I just, I actually just sent it over to Katrina because I want to make it. So Organifi posted just yesterday a, a, a these crepes. Did you see these yet, Justin? I'm no, surprised. So they a, look really good. Greek. Like, <laughs> remind me what a crepe uh, technically is. You, know, it, you don't, you've never ate at the, the crepe place right here yeah. in, in Will, by our old studio? No, bro. No, I'm not, like Opa is uh, the most Greek I've been. You know? <laughs> oh, wow. I eat pancakes since they're American. <laughs> Now in Italy, they're a big deal, right? Yeah, uh, yeah you can get them. Cakes they, have all, they have them. All, they have them. All, I think crepes are French. They are French. They are French. Yeah, but in so Italy, all, they have a. You're ton, all wrong. They have them over in Italy, don't they? Oh yeah, yeah. You, you, you yeah, eat them with in, Nutella. Uh, you can eat them with with uh, cheese and ham. They're really good. Oh, I'm in. Yeah, they have it's, savory ones, and then they have the what you're talking about. Whatever we call that. If it's not savory, would be like uh, you know cheese and like, ham. Be like cream R- cheese, right? No, 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 no. They'll put oh, like, like cheese? yeah, no. They'll put you could put like mozzarella in there. You could put, Ooh. I mean, any kind of cheese you want. Essentially, Ooh, dirty to me. And they're <laughs> <laughs> done deal. I can't believe you haven't had the crepe place that's right over I here. I haven't, dude. You guys never invited oh, me. Well, we, sh- we should go over there and eat sometime. So what I like about the I'm about in. about the the organifi it's dairy free because crepes usually crepe crepe I don't know whatever crepes usually why is crepe. it so hard for you to say because it looks like it's got an E oh, it doesn't yeah. have an A <laughs> if it had an A it'd be craps I guess yeah. crap is I don't want to eat that 
but it's got it's you know every every usually they're made with some kind of dairy, which you know jack messes up my stomach. This one's got no dairy. Look at you blend together three quarter cup of unsweetened vanilla nut milk, uh, third a cup of tapioca flour, third cup of coconut flour, three organic free range eggs, uh, one scoop of Organifi protein and a dash of salt. Then you uh, pour the batter on a on a pan and you. Sp- you flip it or whatever, and there's your there's your crepe. Yeah, crepe. thirty mm. seconds. They cook Sounds delicious, super yeah. fast. And, and then you put can some, put some Nutella on it or oh, something. Yeah, Ooh. dude. Well, that's what they. So in, in in Paris, that's what they they have them like on every corner, everywhere. Mm. Yeah, and, and they make them with those like the little stick or whatever. You know yeah, what I'm talking about? The yeah. stick. With, have you been to Paris? Yeah. When did you go to Paris? Um, let's see here. Two thousand and go back twelve years. What is that? Two two thousand eight. Carry the one. Yeah. yeah I don't know. <laughs> What'd you think? Ish. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, yeah. No, it was probably one of my one of my favorite trips. Uh, I saw a lot too. I was dating a, another girl at the time, and we went out there with her parents. And we were only there for like I want to say six, five or six days. So it was a shorter trip to go all the way out there for as long of a plane ride. This is also when I had uh, tore my ACL MCL. Mm. I ever told you guys this story? No. So uh, when I so right after I, I, I tore my ACL and MCL, uh, we had already had this trip b- booked, and that happened like a week before. Dang. So before surgery or anything. So you're in crutches or anything? Oh, I was on crutches and I had that. So before surgery, they put you in that that foam brace thing. Oh, you can't oh, bend yeah. your knee? Yeah. yeah, where it locks you all the way out. Yep. And, and so, <clears throat> and if you've ever been to Paris, there's cobblestone everywhere. Yep. And it's so beautiful. And you walk everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you walk everywhere. And and so, you know, and I'm, I'm like crutching around. Luckily, I'm a in shape fitness guy. So like that, that part is whatever, you know, but I'm like... Just a, in a, just beautiful everywhere, staring up at buildings. Oh, it's gorgeous. And, and I'm moving around, and I did one of these, like, kind of just looking to the right, and my leg, because it's locked out, it oh. drags, and it hits a cobblestone oh. and hooks on it as I'm rotating oh. with my hips. Oh, and you could hear the tear more. Oh. oh. Fell down to the ground, dude, like, crying. Like, oh, it was in so much pain. Everybody, like, are you okay, sir? Are you okay? And I'm dude. like, oh. Oh, my knees so bad. <laughs> I love Paris. So we were in pa- we went to Paris and then we went to Nice, which is in the south of France. <clears throat> Gorgeous. It's just a, it's a it's a beautiful country. Mm. I love going to uh, to places and seeing old art or so old, on. Yeah, yeah, I love it because especially like Rome, for example. Yeah. Rome is amazing. Well, first of all, it's busy, it's packed, it's a big tourist destination, but once you can kind of get past that, you're looking at something, and you sit there, and you realize you're looking at something that's two thousand so old. Yeah, yeah. two thousand years old. Well, you I, go, like all the well, people that have seen this. I, I, and I didn't yeah. really appreciate and care for that stuff as a kid growing up. It wasn't until I got older and and realized that we have so little history here. Yeah, I mean, and we so, have a lot of history. It's just not as old. Just well, that's new. what I mean. That's yeah. what that's what I mean. We have we have very little as far as how long it is. Uh-huh. And then when you go back there, it's that's what's so amazing to me. It's like you, you think about everywhere we go here. It's like if everything's like. If it's like two or three hundred years old, it's, it's a big a, deal, right? It's a big deal. Yeah. It's, it's my grandma's house in Italy was two hundred years old. You know, I'm not exaggerating. Wow. Right, the, yeah, the house my dad grew up in was a couple here, hundred years old. Yeah, that's crazy. Which yeah. is not that big of a deal, right? You know? Over there, it's like thousands of years old is considered. And the architecture is just like amazing. Yeah, when my, when my mm-hmm. dad was a kid, there was he was working um, as you know he worked in construction <laughs> as a young boy, and they were digging and they hit some some Greek uh, artifacts. Just, Sicily. Uh, at one point, the Greeks were were there. This is before they, you know, became Italy or whatever. So even before, I believe, before the Romans, and they had to stop and they shut the whole place down. And then the, you know they 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 roped it off and they dug things up. That's how old. That's how uh, how that's oh, yeah. it's weird. Yeah, well, you know what trippy too. Here's one cool one to look up, Doug. Uh, you can fact check me because I don't remember the stats on it. But uh, look up how long it took to build the Louvre. And oh. And generations yes i know now think about that for a second like so that and it was you, a, you, you won't even see it being built right and finished so i i tripped out on that when i when i read this like so yeah. you know imagine and by the way it was a it was a someone's home first right mm-hmm. that was they were building it as a as a big ass mansion home for somebody but i think it took i believe it took well over a hundred years it was multiple generations were working on that to build that imagine that imagine being your age right now and you're like busting ass building yeah. something for what your your kids kids mm-hmm. right. like that would be weird dude yeah well, we were tripping out on that like even just like the old like even with the pyramids all these like ancient you know m- megalithic structures that that were built back in the day like it, you have a concentrated effort in one direction from you know masses of people like we just don't have that kind of unified uh, energy and attention towards building like a, a mega structure anymore and, and it's like I think that gets downplayed a 
lot. Yeah, bro, look at this. 300 years. Yeah, I know. 340 years it took. Bro, the, the cathedral, the, the Duomo in, in Milan, it, <laughs> it took uh, six centuries. Yeah. For six cent. Now, if you go to these places and you look at them, of course, they didn't have modern technology, which, which what really trips me out is the engineering. Oh, like, yeah, that's what I mean. The like, math that went into that. Well, it's, right. it was a craftsmanship. Insane. In the, yeah. But you look at it and you walk up close and you see like every little square inch has incredible detail and you realize like, you know, you're, you're, you, if your dad worked on it, right, he finished this much of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he, that's he what had he had a did. little section. He had just a tiny section yeah. working yeah. on it. What really trips me out is the engineering that some of these ancient structures, like uh, the, uh, what, what was it called? The aqueducts, the mm -hmm. Roman Empire. Yeah. They didn't have modern plumbing, but yet they had, they built aqueducts that would take water, fresh right. water from the Alps and bring it all the way down to, you know, southern Italy or whatever, all naturally, all through, right. you know, proper engineering. Some of those still uh, work today. They had yeah. that in the Incas too, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's it's really wild. Yeah, there's some theories that there were civilizations that way predate all that that existed on Earth that just because they were so old that they just, we have no remnants of them. We have a little bit of evidence, but but not much. What's that guy's name? Graham Hancock? Yeah, Graham Hancock. Yeah, didn't he say something Isn't about this? someone reading his book right now? Yeah, Courtney is. Oh, Courtney is? Yeah. yeah, was it Fingerprints of the Gods? Fingerprints of the Gods. Wasn't, didn't, didn't he say something like the, the, the Sphinx in uh, in Egypt's got like erosion lines on it? And, yeah. And water wasn't in Egypt until way before the Egyptians? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like they didn't build it, it was already there type of deal? Right. So yeah, it predates the uh, the pyramids. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that that's one of those things. It's like uh, the history that we know, like nobody's really poking holes in it uh, like he is in like some of these other uh you know uh, and he he came from like a journalistic background yeah he did yeah so it was like so that community and the archaeology community hates you know the work that uh you know he's investigating all this stuff and mm. you know because it's it's such an idea like they have like this whole uh idea of how everything uh, came to be and like this is the story and the narrative they all yeah, came you're up with to counter it you're, you're trying to counter it that you know they're gonna push back like hard his episodes on Rogan are pretty awesome. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got, speaking of Rogan, did you guys listen? What's his name? Is it James Lindsay? I oh, think, you yes. sent that for us to listen to. I, I didn't think listen that's to the it. episode. Maybe Doug can look it up. I was up. listening to that this morning. Yeah. You, guys, you guys both heard it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So dude. fill me in. I have so, no idea. So this guy, the thing about his episode that was really interesting to me is in, in I believe this was in 2018, he, uh, him and his friend, and they're both, he's, now is he a journalist or a researcher? I think he's a journalist. <sighs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I think he's a journalist. I mean, he's obviously is working in academia yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and trying to, yeah. So in 2018, they created a bunch of fake uh, research papers, super, super fake, just to point to poke fun at you know some of these publications, and one of them actually won an award, so which is hilarious. <laughs> he wrote this paper, and so he positioned himself as a. Uh, like a, a feminist, yeah, like a, yeah. like a, a, a I think a les a black lesbian feminist. This mm -hmm. is what this is how he was. It was a researcher, and she, you know, is according to his paper, uh, studied dog parks for yeah. an entire year, six hours a day, and what she was, yeah, James Lindsay is his name, um, and he, in in according to this research, she studied. Uh, fake research studied the uh, the like dog rape. Essentially. Okay, so look, wait, so this is him pretending to be somebody else. No, no, this is actually him. Yeah. The research is him pretending <clears throat> to be someone else. That's what I'm saying. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So he, so in the research, essentially says that they were studying when dogs would hump, when male dogs would hump male dogs, or when male dogs would hump female dogs. How would the white right. cisgender male owners react? Would they react different? And this whole thing. Yeah. And so they came up with this whole theory, according to this fake, fake research, that um, the rape culture in, yeah. in, dog, in parks dog parks is like the rape culture. It's parallel to the rape culture in clubs. Yeah, the accepted, Shut the up. accepted rape culture in clubs and bars, which is, there's no the, accepted rape yeah. culture anyway. And it's, the thing about him that's really brilliant is he just, he did the work at really understanding the terminology and the word words that they, you know, this woke culture is using. And so he's, he tries to, to help everybody understand and define, you know, where this comes from, like what it actually means, because there's just so much of it is, is to make things more confusing on purpose. Yeah. So he, so in this research, he says that the way that dogs are handled is the way that men should be handled uh, in order to fix this problem. Anyway, 
It's, and if you look at the research, it's hilarious. When you read it, you're like, oh my gosh. Because you know it's fake. Though. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, even if you didn't, you'd read it and you, you would either think it's well, crazy or whatever. Anyway, that got an award. Well, the, the point it is that it's just, it's just enough parody to make you know your average person say, oh man, I, I can't believe like this would pull, like pass through. But they're looking for narratives like this so hard that it, it was like, yes, this is what we want to put out there. And then he won an award for it. He got an award and then he told them, hey, listen, this is fake, which of course you know got everybody yeah. Did you guys see off. that? Did you guys? Is there like actually a video of him like announcing that it was fake? No, or, like, I don't. Obviously, he had to keep it under the wraps. He that documented it, it and like videoed uh, when he received the email and everything that they actually chose his paper as as the award. And so I don't know where this documentary is, but I think that they're going to come out. But with they it. they they had several papers published by scientific journals that were fake. So the journals actually publish them. And he's doing it on purpose to prove a point, right? Of course. Yeah. He, there's articles that he wrote under fake names to see if they would get published by news organizations, articles that say things this like- This is what I'm talking about, dude. This is why it's going to be so important in the next 10 years plus that like you just double, triple fact check and be careful of the things that confirm your bias. Dude, and, yes. To me, that is like one of the most dangerous things for our kids growing up is going to be shit like this. Dude, you, it's just common sense. Like use common <laughs> Critical sense. Critical thinking. Yeah, like, like- Yeah, but we're losing that, Well, right? I mean- it's, it's I a lost skill. I talked about this before. Like they, there, there were articles coming out that saying that the 22 million people that protested, in, in many cases, tight quarters, tens of thousands of people- uh, did not ha cause any, you know, increase in, in transmission of COVID. Right. To me, that's like it's so counter, at least the narrative. It's counter to what they've been telling us this whole time, yeah. which is don't go be around more than ten people. Why would they release articles like that? It's so counter common knowledge, or at the very least, like I said, it's against what they've been saying the whole time. In which case. I mean, I think people are going to be left in a situation where they just don't believe anything anymore. Mm -hmm. Is that what you know? Is that what we're heading? I know that's a scary thought, but it's know. it's looking like that. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, speaking of social media, I guess there's a social media company that's coming out that's trying to counter, um, like Facebook and Twitter. Have you heard of it, Parler? No. Oh yeah, yeah. I haven't. Yeah, I have it? not been on there. I, I did. I looked it up, and I actually, want, yeah, I wanted. It. Well, I think it's. I think it's uh, would be smart to invest in, and I wanted to see if they were publicly traded. And they're not public; it's all private, uh, private money. Now, what's the premise? It's, it's basically uncensored uh, social media, so well, they don't edit or censor it. I, I guess, right? What I get from it is like, uh, imagine you know, news thirty years ago or whatever. When it, when did Fox come on the on 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 the scene? Yeah, I think Was you're it right. The, like after that, right? Something like that. So I, I imagine that that's what we're seeing with social media is that a lot of people uh, believe that much of it is, you know, slanted left. And so there's an opportunity for a, a more right or conservative uh, social media platforms to emerge. Uh, and I think what we saw. So if you're somebody who's like. So looking, is it conservative or is it just uncensored? Well, it's did did Fox come out and say they're conservative? Uh, when they that's first a, came that's out? a great point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I don't think Fox came out and said, we're going to be the conservative news. I think they just recognize yeah, that. Fair and balanced. Right. That was the name yeah, of their Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So what I, <laughs> if I'm reading between the lines correctly, what I see is that this is going to be, you know, they, they recognize there is a need for a, a other side that would want, you know, it, it's, it's so funny because that's what I see. Exactly what I think it is. They're positioning it, of course, like where, you, where you're alluding, yeah. which is like a more non-biased type of thing. Yeah. Like, really, though? Like, or is it just going to be <laughs> yeah, like Fox? Be the to alternative. See right. And then so, you're just going to keep having wars. Yeah. Yeah. yeah dude, yeah. it's it's so funny because like I was uh, I was with my dog and um, met up with my friend and we, we do this every now and then and talk shit. And he was, he was just telling me how he just got kicked off of Facebook and he's got uh, he's got a business and everything. And like so there's. You know, there's a reason for him to be on there. This is affecting him financially, but because he was he was directly messaging uh, Gavin Newsom, and, and was, they kicked was, him off. Was, yeah, he was just and he wasn't doing it in a way where he was threatening or anything like that. But he was using language like, "I don't agree with this. I don't agree with that." Like, I you know, I look forward to seeing you out of office, and like was just like really uh, aggressively yeah. like you know like. Trying to trying to get his point across and and they just literally that could be the only reason he got kicked off. Yeah, well, it makes sense. I mean, these are market based companies, and if there's a need in the market, of course, then they're then someone's going to fill it. There's a yeah. lot of money to be made. Well, and that's where I love. I love the, the, the what piques my interest is that like I, I care less about the political bullshit. I'm like, well, there's that's a smart investment. So if you can get in on that, and I believe that you can, uh, but like with private or VC type money. 
get in get involved. In I think I was calling. I called this. I don't know how many episodes ago. Yeah, I you think did. We're going to see it. a max mass exodus of social media, and mm-hmm. that of course will open up a market. Well, for and so to me, I don't even think we're going to see a mass exodus. I think what will what I meant. What I, think, I know what you meant, yeah, yeah. and I think you were right on the with your point, and so, and I think we're both right, right? Because I didn't think there'd be a mass exodus. What we're going to see is a division. We're yeah, going yeah, to see yeah. that will emerge. And instead of everybody completely leaving their addiction of social media, they'll just move how to their more that? biased how, the platform. How funny is that? You're going to be able to look at someone's phone and then tell you know, where they stand on things. Just like you can with news. Like, hey, right. uh, wh- where do you watch your news? You know, CNN. Oh, I know where you think. Or oh, hey, Fox. Yeah. Oh, okay, it's going to be like it. that with their yeah. phone. You're going to yeah. open their phone and be like, oh, you're on Facebook. I know where you, you know. Yeah. Oh, you're on this other one. I know what you think. Right. How funny. <laughs> First question is from Terry Newyup19. Should I go to failure on isolation exercises? <sighs> Sal hates to do this. Yeah. This is actually a good question because, um, so first off, isolation exercises are movements that typically utilize one joint, right? So like a yeah. curl or a tricep extension or a lateral for the shoulders. Those are all considered uh, isolation exercises. Now, I'm not a huge fan of going to failure a lot on lifts. However, if you're going to go to failure, it's typically more appropriate to be done on isolation movements because they just don't, they don't cause as much damage to the body. Like one set to failure of barbell squats is going to fry everything. It's going to fr- not just fry your muscles, but also fry your central nervous system. It's going to take a lot more recovery to come back. It's, everything. It's not just that. It's the the risk too, right? Mm-hmm. So if I'm doing a you know cable bicep curl to failure, uh, it's you're probably not going to hurt yourself. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm not going to hurt myself when I can't get that last rep up. You do a barbell squat with 200 pounds on your back, and you can't get that last rep up. I mean, there's a good chance. And, and even if you don't get hurt like bad, like do something to your knee or tear something, the the stress that it even puts on all the wrong muscles, <laughs> the the ones that aren't supposed to be assisting in the lift, but that, that are helping you to bail out and get mm-hmm. out. Then you have that going on too. So, well, not to mention the load's going to be a lot less. Uh, you know, in terms of like comparing that to a backloaded squat, deadlift, or bench press, or something like that, where you know, like you can control the weight a little bit more to failure and have right. yeah. So th- th- there is a lower risk factor to that. I remember doing was it twenty ones all the time oh, for yeah. like bicep curls, and uh, so this was something that we did experiment a lot with. Uh, with isolation, isolation exercises, I can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. No, I, li- I like it for I like it for that reason. In fact, uh, I I'm not a fan. We talk about not going to failure most of the time. I mean, mm-hmm. 80, 80 plus percent of uh, training in the gym is not to failure for me for sure on any exercises, even isolation exercises. But if you, if I am going to utilize it, I'm going to utilize it more there. And just think about it when you, if, if you're, if your goal, especially if you're trying to sculpt, it's different if you're just trying to build overall strength or work on CNS, like you just out power output, right? But if you were trying to build a body and you're doing a bench press, your, your desired outcome of, of building, doing that is to build your chest. Right. And if you take that exercise to failure, unless you're a really advanced lifter and really, really good of knowing when the chest fails to not allow the rest of the body to cheat or compensate to mm-hmm. move the weight anymore, you end up working other stuff. You're not, you're not getting the real benefits from what you're trying to do by taking the chest to failure on a bench press because it ends up shoulders get involved, the arching in the back gets involved. You know, I just not ideal if your goal was to build a now chest. That, that's also somewhat yeah. true for isolation though, right? Because if you're doing an isolation movement, your form needs to be perfect. Like talking about a, a lateral, for example, a sad lateral. Your form needs to be perfect to really hit the side uh, of the shoulders. And when you go to failure on an isolation exercise, it typically becomes something different. The form yeah. tar- starts to break down. And so this is true for isolation. If you're going to go to failure in isolation movements, do it with perfect form. I mean, this is true for all exercises, yeah. but it, it's really easy to change it up and it turn it into something It gets away from different. you fast because you're trying your hardest to get through you know, the grueling part of that. And then inevitably, you're going to compensate because your body's uh, you're telling your body we need to be able to get to that that end rep. You no. know, so you're going to get it by all means necessary. That, this is a great point because uh, – there's a there's a difference, and I, I believe one of the programs we actually have we we actually talk about this right. We talk about the difference between uh, what what everybody else deems failure and then what we consider failure. Right. right? Mm-hmm. So failure to me isn't that I can't move the weight anymore or lift it or even perform the exercise anymore. Like 
failure to me is the minute that my form breaks down. Yeah, I yep. cannot maintain perfect form. I anymore. cannot. Yeah, I cannot keep perfect form anymore. Therefore, I've failed. I've, I've, now I don't do. But I know when when that happens, I could cheat up one or two more reps. Totally. No mm-hmm. matter what exercise that I'm doing. Yeah. So you have to take that into consideration whether you're doing an isolation or compound in this in this conversation. Is that you know, failure is is a, is a tool and can be a, a great tool when used appropriately. But one of the ways that you really quickly lose a lot of the benefits of training to failure is when you do one, two reps beyond uh, what form failure looks like, and then you just overcompensate on other areas. Now you're now you're creating bad patterns, bad habits, and you're increasing risk. And it just becomes a yeah. different exercise, right? All right. Next question is from Adam Kotzmeyer. How often do you really need to work abs and core? Uh, like you would work any other body part. Mm-hmm. Now, m- most people do best working body parts uh, anywhere between two to four days a week, I would say. Most people somewhere in the middle uh, at about three. Now, studies show why this is uh, tends to be the case. When you work out, you get this spike in what's known as muscle protein synthesis, which essentially is a signal showing that your body is building new, using proteins to build new tissue, okay? So that rises after working out. It drops very quickly after about 48 to 72 hours, even if you're still recovering. So let's say you work out your your biceps really, really hard on Monday. By Wednesday, that signal drops, even if your biceps are still recovering and still sore. And that's because recovery and adaptation are are kind of two separate different uh, things. So for most people, you, you want to Keep that signal elevated, which means every other day or every third day, you want to hit that body part again. This is also true for the abs and the core. It took me a long time to really figure this out. It's, and it's funny because I, I applied it to clients uh, way yeah. before I did for myself. But when I did apply this to myself, it was a total game changer. And and now I'm not saying double the volume of your workouts yeah. by working them out, you know, training your body parts, you know, two or three days a week. I'm saying take your total volume. And just divide it up over two or three workouts so that you get more of that frequency. Same thing, it's still true for the abs and core as well. About two to three days a week, maybe four days a week if you're advanced is probably perfect. Yeah, I, I kind of picked this question because this was one of those areas where I, I find myself like – I'm guilty of neglecting every now and then just because it's one of those considerations of training where, uh, like it, you really have to keep that attention in that specific part of your body. And it's, it is a, a big difference in performance. It's a big difference in the way that, uh, I have, I have this, uh, stability in this, this rigidity, uh, throughout my body that, uh, helps me to perform movements better. It I feel strong supported and, uh, like I, I tend to forget about it because I, I'll, I'll end up doing compound lifts where I'm bracing hard. I'm, I'm feeling the weight that my, my abs are very much involved in terms of like stabilizing my spine, but I'm not actively strength training my abs. And when I don't, I feel the difference. Well, I, I'm going to defend you a little bit though, Justin, because I, I do think the statement that Sal said is, is, is generally true. And I agree that uh, it's just like any other muscle. If you want to develop it or if you want to get the most out of it, you should be training it two to four times a week. And that that stands true. But I think the what I would add to that is I do think that there is a, a much higher need for it depending on the way the person trains already. Mm-hmm. Meaning this, like, so something that we all know about Justin, because we've talked it, uh, at, at nauseum on the show, is he's the unconventional guy. He swings the mace bells. He pushes the sled a lot. He like he does plyometric explosive stuff a lot. He does anti-rotational stuff. All of those incorporate the core and abs more than the traditional bodybuilding type of routine. Mm. So I think that it, what Sal says is true, but I think that it's really important for somebody to really understand the way they train and how important it is that they they need to be including ab and core training. If you were mm-hmm. if you're an athlete yeah. and you are training a lot of, you know, multiplanar movements and explosive and anti-rotational and swinging clubs, there's a lot of good core stabilization stabilization that's happening and strengthening and in heavy loaded squats, all great. It's probably less important that that person is making sure they're hitting their abs two to three times a week than it is for somebody Hmm. who is doing buys on one day and tries and then chest another day and doing very and a lot of machine exercises and don't incorporate a lot of unconventional training. Right, Mm -hmm. right. For example, the the program that we have on 50% off uh, this month is MAP Strong. 
following a program like Map Strong, you don't need to do a lot of targeted core work just because you're follow but because you're following a program that includes things like farmer walks and snatch grip deadlifts and high pulls. Circus and press. Circuit li- lots of movements that involve uh, core stabilization. There are core movements in the in the program, but uh, there's not a lot of uh, you know specific core movements because so many of the movements involve the core. So that's a very, very uh, yeah, good, a good point. point. Now, one of the other reasons why I like working out body parts more frequently is skill is better developed when you practice more frequently. It just is. This is for any skill. Uh, frequency is king with this, and resistance training is also a skill. Um, so besides the muscle protein synthesis signal and all that, even if once a week with the same amount of volume as two or three days a week built the same amount of muscle, the three-day-a-week one is going to develop better skills uh, with the lifts. So for me, the two to four days a week, uh, if you want to work your core in a target way, is ideal. Next question is from X Suppo. What do you all consider the most three most essential supplements a person should take if they could only take three? Well, that would be oh, yeah. Very, like my three would be different than probably your three because of sure. you know, vitamin yeah. D is one for me. Mm. Yeah, you know because of my my skin issues and stuff like that and my lack of sunlight. That's a a staple for me. If you're somebody who has a, a don't have a deficiency there, then it shouldn't be a essential one for you. Mm-hmm. So this question is very very dependent on. The person, and this is what we've said since day one on supplements. Like the best way to supplement is to figure out what you potentially are lacking in, and that becomes essential for you. It is now. Yeah. Now I, I can speak generally, so I'm I'm going to speak. And Adam's 100 percent correct. It depends on the person, but generally speaking, most people will benefit from taking creatine. That's a supplement that most people are going to notice some benefits, and the benefits include strength gain. Uh, they're going to they're going to notice per, per, uh, potentially improved cognition. It does show that in a lot of studies. Um, it's got pro health properties with it. In fact, creatine is now being included in a lot of wellness supplements. We're not even talking about sports or bodybuilding supplements. Right. Muscle sparing. Yeah, well, yeah. just wellness supplements now are starting to include uh, creatine. Um, it's it's good for the mitochondria of the of the cells. So creatine would be one that I would say that you know generally speaking, most people would benefit from taking. The other one would be protein powder. Now, it's not because you need protein powder, but it's rather because a lot of times people find it difficult if their goals are to build muscle or preserve muscle if they're burning body fat. They may find it difficult to eat the the optimum amount of protein for that. And studies show that that's a high amount. That's a high amount of protein. For most people, it's it's a lot. You know, mm-hmm. you're looking at if you're a a 150 pound female, you're looking at about 110 to 150 grams of protein a day. Which you know that's that's a decent amount of protein, and most people have a tough time getting that in. And protein powders can be extremely valuable uh, in a situation like that. Yeah, I think I, that used to be my focus when I was more trying to really muscle gain, and it was all about performance. These days, it's it's all about gut health for me and digestion, and so. I tend to my my top ones like revolve around that right. and so digestive enzymes and shit. Yeah, like that. digestive enzymes, HCL pills, uh, uh, probiotics, you know, things like that that are, are going to help uh, my 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 gut flora and uh, just help me to not have uh, the symptoms that like you know uh, heartburn and things like that that I suffer from. So uh, I mean that that really is something that if those are obviously considered supplements that are you know very valuable for me in terms of my own. Uh, health and well-being these days. Yeah, and, and I think the most valuable supplement you'll ever take um, is the one that is specific to you. Right. That's by far. Yeah. Like if you have a new look, if you have a nutrient deficiency and you supplement with a nutrient that you that your body needs, that's a total game changer. It's it literally will change well, I mean, your life. That's, yeah, like that, vitamin D is a big one. Yeah. Right. That's huge for me. I, then I would make the case also for like green juice. I'm notorious for not getting vegetables. I could easily have three days in a row where I was just I was eating meals that didn't include that. Like yeah. when I'm good and I'm and I'm prepping and I'm doing all that, then it's not an issue. But there's lots of times when I'm on the go or I'm lazy or I'm being quick and I don't get enough vegetables in my diet. And I can see and feel a significant difference when I do. Mm-hmm. And of course, always I'm going to advocate for people getting that through whole foods. That is the most ideal way always to do it. But if not, uh, and I have that, that becomes a very essential supplement for me to have on my side too. Next question is from Frines de Mamos. How do you fix a hip shift when one hip is higher than the other at the bottom of a squat or a deadlift? 
Okay, so this mm, asymmetrical shift. Yeah, there's a few reasons why this could be happening. Um, in my experience, training clients, oftentimes you're looking at an imbalance um, in the spine. There could be a, a, your 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 QL muscle could be shortened mm -hmm. on one side, causing the hip uh, to rise up a little bit. Nonetheless, I, I don't know what you look like. I can't watch your squat, so I can't diagnose necessarily over the podcast. But I will say this: the way to fix it um, may be to go much lighter slow down and to forcibly uh, put that hip in a level position, however light you need to go to make that happen. And then to practice that enough times to where you can add a little bit of weight and then that, that form doesn't change and slowly move up in that way and be very patient. Um, because typically with any kind of a movement issue, the second you really challenge yourself, you go right back to the poor movement pattern. So you got to take your time with this. It can take a long time sometimes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, you know, like Sal, the, I can't diagnose you without yeah. seeing you move, right? So it could be a, a host of different things. Now, I will share with you because this is uh, more recent for me that uh, my mind was blown when uh, I met, you know, Doctor Brink five years ago, and Brink really opened my eyes to how much is related to the foot, mm -hmm. and the, I was guilty of this. So I had a slight uh, asymmetrical shift uh, at the bottom of my squat. And I constantly was looking at, you know, knees and hips and, and everything above and wasn't really paying attention to my feet. And it was 100% related to I was pronating excessively on one side more than the other, which caused it to cause the shift. Yeah. And, and that is where it stemmed from was that. And now, and since I was educated on that, now when I've looked at other people's squats and helped them with deadlifts with similar situations as the one that we're talking about right now, 90% of the time, it actually was the foot was the area I had to address first and then work my way up the kinetic chain. Mm, yeah. So you may feel it in like back areas and notice knee and stuff like that. But a lot of times it's stemming from your feet. So I, I love to take someone like this now and barefoot squat them or barefoot deadlift them and and either video it for them so they can watch it and see it and really analyze the, the feet on both. And you'd be surprised, normally when you have something like this, you're going to see a major discrepancy on one side more than the other. I found a lot of what you're talking about uh, is something I started to gear my focus and attention on too and have people do walking patterns barefoot and you can really <coughs> uh, see where these compensations occur. Uh, and to just be very very simple uh, in terms of like something that I would focus on, you know, and shift my attention towards would be more of uh, unilateral training and also like single leg balance and things like that. What, what What's really something that was eye opening for me was the, the, the instability. And so what, what we need to address here is how the body's overcompensating based off of an instability that, that, you know, is highlighted. And where's that instability occur? That's where we need to do the work to find that out. So those types of exercises, um, uh, to really work on, you know, core and control and, uh, you know, sending the right type of recruitment pattern will be everything. Yeah, it's funny about these types of things is that uh, oftentimes you have them, you don't even know. Yeah. You know, you're lifting and you you can even be watching yourself in the mirror and you won't necessarily pick up on oh, I didn't. what's happening. I'm a fucking trainer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why I like to share what I just I went through because it, it blew my mind. I mean, over a decade, I would have already considered myself a damn good trainer by this time. And it just, it was completely oblivious to me that the issues were stemming from my foot. Yeah. What, what you can do is if you want to see how you, you know, if you have any of these issues is you can film just your feet and ankles and then film just your knees and then just your hips, just your upper back, hands and shoulders, and then film the whole thing and scrutinize throughout the entire movement. And very few people are totally balanced. Most people have some kind of a breakdown somewhere. And this is cool because then when you find it, you know there's something you can work on. And when you fix it, it's like, yeah. oh, it's life-changing. All of a sudden, you you feel it totally different. It unlocks all new potential. Oh, Completely. it does that. And what happens with a lot of times with someone like this who is you know exercising on a regular basis is they typically have stiffness or achiness or tightness on one side more than the other and it's just part of their life mm -hmm. i mean how i've had to dealt with so many clients like that where they oh, my right side of my low back yeah tightens up sometimes or my my left knee bothers mm -hmm. me or what you know and what's cool is that you you had no idea that 
you know, it was really stemming from this this breakdown. And when you address that, all of a sudden you alleviate these things. I mean, that's that was like me for my low back. Like I just assumed that low, squatting was means my low back is going to be on fire for the next two or three days, and that was part of it. It wasn't until I really started to unpack and break this all down and put the work in. You know, and start addressing this. Did I start to see a lot of that stuff go away? Excellent. Look, this month Maps Strong is fifty percent off. Uh, just go to mapsstrong.com and use the code Strong fifty. That's S T R O N G five zero. If you want to find us on Instagram, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. <laughs>